Good morning, everyone. Morning, at least for those who are in the Central European time zone. Others will be in a different time period. Welcome to the second day of the seminar on small, low-cost fish from bait to plate, which is being hosted by FAO in collaboration with four resource teams. And you see their logos on this opening page, Dried Fish Matters, Fish for Food, Econ F3, and Small Fish Food. And these projects from which we will be hearing also today, they are uh, being uh, being uh, carried out in uh, many parts of Africa as well as Asia. What we did yesterday? Yesterday was the first day of the of the of the seminar. We had three sessions: an opening session, a session in which we looked at the ecology and harvesting section of the fish chain, and then in the afternoon, we looked at the processing segment of the uh, small fish chain. Today, what we will be doing is continuing our journey uh, up the chain or down, the, no, up the chain. Uh, first, looking at the consumption of small fish in the first session in this morning, and then this afternoon, turning to the trade uh, and distribution uh, section. We will then conclude this day with uh, a reflection or collection of the pieces and looking towards policy which might help move the small the, the contribution of small low cost fish to food and nutrition security forward. So that's the program for today. Uh, I expect that many of you will have been there yesterday, but some may not have. So the program allows for a recapitulation of, let's say, the important messages from yesterday. And, and while I will be also making an effort, I'll try to summarize, at least in my own words, uh, the, the, the main messages uh, that came forward. I would also invite you both uh, uh, participants in yesterday's session, but also maybe panelists who served, uh, who presented yesterday, to note uh, what they see as their more, the, as the main lessons, the things learned uh, in the question and answer chat. And we could also make use of that potentially for, uh, for this opening session. So please put your any comments you might have, any ideas you might have about what struck you particularly in yesterday's uh, part of this seminar, please put it in the question and answer uh, uh, section or question and answer channel. Okay, let me try and, and uh, recall, go through what we, we, what we discussed yesterday. So to start with, it's, it's useful to remind ourselves that the seminar has taken a supply chain perspective and that we are also trying to uh, bring together insights from various disciplines. So we are, we are following an interdisciplinary perspective in investigating the contribution of small low cost fish to food and nutrition security. Yesterday morning, uh, the opening was taken care of by Nancy Aburto of the FAO Food and Nutrition Division. And she noted that the timeliness of the event in the sense that the topic of uh, food and nutrition security is very high on the agenda. And there is more attention now also to the role of fish and seafood in, uh, in supplying food and nutrition security. And this Basically, I, you could say this is uh, this provides a window of, of opportunity for ourselves to also move the, the topic further, uh, not only today, but in the, uh, in the period that is ahead of us. Uh, the second opening speaker, the keynote was given by Shakuntala Tilsed from World Fish, uh, whose main message and who has been driving forward this message over many years, that small fish are a superfood of 
low monetary but very high nutritional value. Uh, small fish are often eaten whole and they provide the consumer with many micronutrients and vitamins. In other words, small fish are very much worth investing in or uh, thinking about in the connection of food and nutrition security of poor people. We then move to the first real section of the seminar, which dealt with ecology and harvesting, which was moderated by Jeppe Kolding. And we had a number of speakers touching on various aspects of the ecology of small fish and also their harvesting. The first point which uh, emerged strongly is that small fish of many species, because they are not single species, many of them belong to the smaller pelagics, are abundant both in marine and in freshwater environments, and that they also reproduce very quickly. They reproduce their own biomass four to five times a year. And this uh, this, this section of marine life is therefore an excellent source for, for food and nutrition security. Interestingly, however, small fish are not evenly distributed in geography. They are concentrated certainly in the ocean in some regions over others. This is connected to upwellings and to El Nino, for instance. And this means that there can be a uh, a difference or the locations for supply and for demand may be quite different. So we heard some instances yesterday of the Peruvian anchovy uh, fish fisheries, which is one of the most dominant in the world, which in which much of the fish is actually exported to other countries. And in this case, often for agriculture feed. We also heard from Martin Pastors that the, 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 the fisheries uh, that his company is actually doing in the Northeast Atlantic is actually de uh, destined for the African consumer market. Again, a disjunction between the locations of, uh, of uh, harvesting and the location of demand. We learned yesterday also that small fish are harvested through industrial and through small scale fishing methods. Uh, with important questions also arising about their prioritization, um, whereby small scale fisheries are argued to contribute more to food and nutrition security of people and to employment, while industrial fisheries are brought forward as being particularly effective. With a very large proportion of catches, especially from industrialized fisheries going to fish reduction and the animal feed industry, the agriculture fisheries, uh, there are important questions about how to safeguard the availability of small fish for human consumption. This is one of the big challenges probably for the time to come. Let us move to the second session section uh, on on processing, processing of fish, which is moderated by Derek Johnson of the Dried Fish Matters Project. And we had a number of presentations there, uh, which brought out at least the following points. Fish is, first of all, uh, a very deteriorate, deteriorating product. It deteriorates easily, uh, with a consequence that, at least in some sectors, there are high post-harvest losses. On the other hand, some speakers also brought forward that in developing countries, often every single fish and every single part of a fish is actually used. And this raises questions also about post harvest losses. Speakers also brought out that because of the deteriorated quality of fish, that there are risks of microbial contamination and also of chemical adulterations present in many parts of the world. There are old traditions of extending shelf life of fish through smoking, drying, fermenting, etc. And we heard that in Ghana, for instance, 80% of the small fish that is landed is actually smoked. 
in other parts of the world, as the Dried Fish Matters Project Rock brings out, drying of fish is actually more fatal. We heard that processing is characterized by a gender division of labor and a greater role of women. And the point brought out there by Daniel Overa was also that these women are frequently less heard in the in the in governing in governing circles, in policy circles. We also heard that research has now provided indications of food composition for both fresh and processed products. And results of this research confirm the high nutritional value of small fish. Marianne Tilsed suggested that a food-based approach using small fish is preferable to a nutrient su supplementation approach. But the understanding of the effect of processing on nutritional quality is still very poorly understood. It is clear, however, that there are substantial negative sides to what we could call traditional processing methods in the sense that they create various health risks, both for the consumer as well as for the processor. And it is for this reason that many attempts have been made to improve processing techniques, such as introducing new smoking ovens, such as the ones which Ben Campion from Ghana showed us in his presentation. And this, his presentation also suggests that many of these innovations or attempts at introducing new technology are relatively unsuccessful. And one reason which came forward for this is that processors often cannot recover the extra costs of investing in new technology by raising the price because the consumers are not immediately interested in uh, or knowledgeable about the new kinds of products realized. We also heard from Lyndon Paul in, in Cambodia, a very interesting presentation uh, on, a, on a business approach to innovation uh, with regard to small fish, making uh, dietary products, uh, including small fish, and aiming to thereby also improve the uh, the, the, the nutritional or the health condition of the poorer Cambodian population. One of the uh, things which came out in this presentation is also that not all Cambodians actually benefit from this, this, uh, uh, this innovation. And that has to do also with the high level of inequality in the country. Let me now turn to a few challenges that emerge for small, low-cost fish chains during this first day. The first point is that poor governance of many fisheries results in suboptimal harvesting, and there is much room for improvement of governance and thereby of the harvesting sector and, and, and the post-harvest uh, as a follow-up. The second point is that science has generally focused on what you could call the protection of small and juvenile fish, uh, also such, such as through mesh, uh, mesh size regulations, etc. But that this policy in this trend, this dominant trend in, in fishery science can actually be drawn into doubt. There's also a uh, severe lack of information and data on many aspects of the small fish chain, uh, which is due also to the neglect it has suffered in policy circles, but also in science. And I think we're trying to actually regain some ground in that respect. We have also noted the challenge that emerges from the harvesting uh, of small fish, uh, the, namely the competition that takes place between small scale and industrial fisheries. Uh, and this, this is definitely not resolved and raises all kinds of uh, social justice aspects. We also, there's also the challenge which was uh, raised yesterday, emerged yesterday, but will be continued on today, that the 
growth of the fish reduction industry, the fish feed and the fish oil industry uh, may go, may be to the detriment of low income human consumers. And the large volumes of small fish that actually go to the fish reduction industry and thereby to the agriculture industry is also a source of concern. Another challenge is that processing methods or many processing methods are suboptimal from a nutritional point, a point of view or even harmful and might require adjustment. But while in reality, processors themselves often turn, tend to be conservative and cling to time-tested methods. So that raises questions on how to pursue innovations. Let's see, um, maybe to conclude my, uh, my summary here, some overall impression. From our first day of the seminar, uh, we have, we have uh, received observations on the ecology, the harvesting and processing, and we could, we could deduce that small low-cost fish chains are widely available in low-income countries and regions. One, one of the things which has come out. But then the question is, do they actually reach all the low-income rural and urban consumers? And this is a question we will be discussing later this afternoon uh, when we talk about trade and distribution, but also this morning when we hear about the consumer perspective. Do they, do these low, uh, do these small and low cost fish chains actually reach these consumers? And then finally, the question, how can the governance of these chains be improved? How can policies be improved? Policies, not only of governments, not only of international organizations, but civil society organizations and, uh, and organizations bringing together people uh, in these small fish chains, whether they are traders, uh, fishermen, processors, or the like. So, and that we will be dealing with at the end of the day. So that brings me to the end of my own uh, summary of yesterday's uh, events. Um, I'm going to turn this off now and see whether we have some inputs. Um, Okay, one of the, Marlouche Kran the, the, has raised a point in the Q&A. One of the main lessons uh, was the reflection yesterday by Benjamin Campion on how interventions or smoking ovens have failed in Ghana and what we should learn from that. That's one of the points I also noted above. I think it's a valid point. Um, I'm attended and uh, making a, a, I'm being corrected to sp speak more about aquatic life uh, and not only but marine life. I apologize for that. I'm, uh, I'm more of a marine uh, anthropologist myself, but my intention was also to talk about the more general picture, including inland and marine. So indeed, aquatic life is a much better thing to talk about. Cornelly Quist, again addresses this issue of technology for, for technological innovations. She suggests that in Ghana, technological solutions are not the best answers to complex issues and need to connect with social, economical, ecological, and other dimensions of the problem. In other words, you need to connect to context. Technology cannot be introduced in a vacuum. It is introduced or, um, yeah. In, in a particular context, which has certain uh, characteristics. Uh, Ranyield also continues with this. Uh, I agree with Marlouis. Benjamin Campion summed this up in one of his conclusions in this way. The women themselves must be the ones who desire the technology and there must be a natural evolution of this technology. However, there could be health and fish safety reasons that could justify technological innovation. 
So the trick is to do this in ways that the processors desire and at a cost that can, uh, that can uh, contribute to consumer willingness and the ability to pay for the improved fish products. All very valid points, I think. Um, are there others who, um, yes, and Mr. Ramakrishnan has also brought out quite rightly, I didn't use the word, but as Jeppe Kolding has also introduced us to the balanced harvesting approach in which the catching of juveniles is not necessarily a problem. And so thank you for, uh, for bringing this out, uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan. 